Flexibility and versatility. These are two words that I use quite often in describing EDIUS 7. With the new 64-bit power, EDIUS 7 is the best 3D editor on the planet. Today, I'm going to show you the different ways to import and set up your 3D media files into EDIUS 7. By the way, even though this tutorial is in 2D, if you have a pair of red cyan 3D glasses, then you'll be able to view the images in the preview window in 3D, as I will keep it set to anaglyph mode for you. There are three basic ways to import files into EDIUS 7. I'm going to move some windows out of the way and show you the typical hard drive organization for a shoot that I just did in Japan. You notice that I shot eight days and inside each day is a listing of the capture devices that are used that day. If you want to maintain this directory structure in EDIUS 7, then the easiest way to do so is using the drag and drop method. Simply highlight all the days and then drag the folders into the root drive of your bin. The advantage to this method is that with one swipe you've dragged all your files into EDIUS 7 that you need to work with. The disadvantage is that if you have a lot of files it may take some time to import them this way. Also, you do wind up with a lot of folders and subfolders and sub subfolders. You get the idea. The second method is to stay inside the bin in EDIUS 7. You then create your folder structure for where you want to place each of the different types of files. Once that's completed, right click inside each folder and click Add File. From there, you can go into the directory structure and locate your files. Click on one or all at once. You notice in the window when you click on each file, you see a thumbnail that you can scroll through to see if it's the clip that you want to use. Also at this point, you have the option of clicking the Transfer to Project folder. By doing this, you will not only open the clip in the bin, but will also transfer a copy of the video files into the project folder that you created for this project on your hard drive. At the bottom of the window is Clip Color. With this command, you can make your file show up in the bin in a color code of your choosing. This can make it easier to keep track of clips from different cameras on the timeline. Notice the name and comment area. Here you can add comments about anything important about that particular clip. A variation on the add file method is in the icons located at the top of the bin folder. Here you will see an add clip icon. Left click on it and it opens up the same window we just saw. The last method is the source browser. Here you see a listing for various file types that can be imported using this method. We're going to look at two. First, removable media. In most cases, removable media will recognize any card reader with an AVCHD memory card inserted. But by opening the system settings and going to removable media in the importer exporter group, you can tell EDIUS where these files are located on your hard drive by simply adding more source folders. Once done, click Apply and OK. Back in the source browser, you see that we now have several groups. The first group is from my Panasonic HTC Z10000. This camera shoots MVC or Multiview Codec 3D files. Notice the S in the preview clip in the source browser. This stands for stereoscopic. By right-clicking on any of these clips, we are given several options. We can add to bin, which would simply add the clip to the bin folder that we have highlighted. Our next option is to add and transfer to bin. This action does two things. First, it adds the clip to the bin folder that we have highlighted. Second, it transfers a copy of the clip into a transferred folder in your EDIUS project file. We can preview the clip by clicking the next option, Show in Player. With Add to Timeline, we can add the clip to the timeline without adding it to the bin or transferring it anywhere. Lastly, if we want to examine the properties for the clip, we can click Properties. Now once imported into the bin, these files can be placed on the timeline. Notice that you don't need to do anything to these files. EDIUS 7 already knows that they are 3D stereo files. Let's go back to the source browser and take a look at our next group. 
These files come from the Panasonic AG3D A1. This camera is the first single body twin lens 3D camera on the market. It records to two AVC HD cards, one for left and one for right. But because we have both left and right being read by EDIA 7, we now have a third group that has appeared. When we click on this, we see the identical files that we saw in the left and right folders. The difference this time is that it recognizes them as stereoscopic media files. By working with the source browser, we have eliminated the need to manually pair our files together in the bin to create stereo-ready files. This is one of those shortcuts that few people know about. It can save you a tremendous amount of time in your edit workflow. Next, let's look at the P2 group. P2 cards are used by the Panasonic AG3D P1. Panasonic created this fantastic 3D tool as a broadcast-ready 3D camera. In fact, 70 of these cameras were used at the Olympics to record in 3D. You have the choice here of either using your P2 card reader plugged into your computer or transferring the files to your hard drive with the P2 directory structure intact. Then, by using the system settings, you can tell EDIA 7 where these files are on your hard drive. Again, we can look at the individual left and right files separately, or look at the new group that EDIA 7 has created. Notice the S for stereoscopic on these files. All that's left to do is transfer these to bin using the methods I highlighted earlier. That's it for this tutorial. In our next tutorial, I'll show you how to set up and prepare your 3D files for editing and a secret way to quickly prepare 3D dailies for viewing, either on location or in your studio. See you next time.